Now, so far, we've talked about a number of different trees uh, that we've kind of seen in our, our videos. Uh, so we have our traditional binary search tree. Uh, this is effectively what allows us to uh, kind of operate in some kind of confined manner where uh, a node can either have one uh, child or two children uh, and or no children, uh, but we worked off the principle that anything that was to the right was greater, anything to the left was less than, uh, and we expanded on that. Uh, we started to look into a few different trees. Uh, we actually took that same idea of, well, oh, this I can only have zero, one, or two children, and then we expanded it to something like a two, three tree. And the entire premise behind this is now, uh, maybe uh, we can have, we can have a node with two keys and three children. Now, a 2-3 key is just a very, very specific implementation of what we would call a B tree. B tree, a balanced tree. But that's not the only type of tree that we talked about. We also introduced something like an AVL tree. And the entire premise behind the AVL tree was that it was self-balancing. By using uh, the balance factor, by using the balance factor, it would uh, do multiple rotations to set itself back into some particular order. And then we also introduced this idea of splay trees, which moved, moved to the root. Now, one of the issues that we have with every one of these is we get hung up a little bit on how we interact with it. When I insert and remove in a 2-3 tree, I'm stuck with the idea that I have to split and I have to do fusions and transfers. When I do AVLs, I have to do rotations, and if I uh, that rotation didn't work, then I do a double rotation. Uh, and with splays, well, I, I do that same thing, uh, but I just don't do a balance with it. So one of the things that we want to introduce is a different kind of tree that looks uh, to try and resolve those problems. And we like to call that something known as the red, and just because uh, I want to, black tree. So this red, black tree, it does follow a few rules uh, that we do have to kind of uh, maintain. As long as we maintain these rules, we can actually keep uh, a very balanced tree. So the first rule is root is black. And now this seems a little interesting. You see, we have these two colors here, and what we're looking at is that my tree is now going to have nodes that are either red or black. So when I say root must be black, uh, we're saying that that root node has to have the color black to it. The next one is all leaf nodes are also black. Now, we you're you're trying to say to yourself, well, when do we, when do we start getting a red node uh, in this place? Well, ha ha ha! How conveniently, all children of red nodes are black. All right. And finally, we have something known as a black depth. We must maintain this. And the entire premise behind this is that uh, what we're looking at is for, from any node, from any node, all children must have the same number of black nodes. And the entire premise here, nodes, is, again, if I'm looking at any uh, node, say for example, I'm at the root of my tree, 
from all potential paths that are leading from this node, they must all calculate out to the same number of uh, black nodes. So let's actually kind of take a look at one. And if you kind of take a look and you, you look at this for a moment, you m will see that, yes, ah, the root is black. And, huh, leaf nodes aren't black. You know, they're here, here, here. So one of the things that's interesting about a, uh, a red-black tree is we're, we're sort of doing a, a little bit of a disservice uh, right now. The idea is if we were to implement this, if you know, we were to spend time with each one of these, each one of these is some kind of node, which means that this node has a left child and a right child. The reason why this is important is because if I look at 5, if I look at 20, if I look at 40, 65, 80, 90, they all still technically have some child. It's just empty right now. And so what we would do in our kind of to maintain the rules of a red-black tree is we would also kind of visualize that all of our nodes, if they can have a child, it is a black null child. So just to kind of finish up here, you see that I'm putting in the final touches of these null children. Uh -huh. And done. So if we follow that premise again, that uh, all of my nodes must have children, uh, and if they don't have children, those are null children, we classify those null children as black, that second property works as well. Then you see if all the children of a red node are black. Well, here's a red child, or here's a red node, here's a red node, here's four red nodes. The children, what do you know, are black, the children are black. And if we're looking at these, these bottom ones that have uh, null children, since we classify a null node as being black, we would say that this does, in fact, still work in our position. Now, finally, we were talking about that idea of black depth. Black depth. There we are. <laughs> the idea is from any node, let's say just arbitrarily we pick 15, from any node, all the possible paths from that node are going to equal ha or have the same number of black nodes in them. So how many paths can 15 take? It can go down the route. I'm going to do a little bit of an eraser. I'm going to get rid of just this so we can uh, see it. You know that that's true. Uh, let's see. We'll take it and we'll, we'll shrink it down. There we go. Yeah. So that works. So, like I was saying, I have 15. Well, what are my paths? So I can go down to 5, and I can go down to its left child. I can go down to 5, and I can go to its right child. I can go down to 25, down to 20, down to its left child, down to 25, down to 20, down to its right child, down to 25, down to 40, down to its left, and then again for its right. For every single one of those paths that I just identified, I would count the number of black nodes that I see. So in case that first one, I see 5, that's 1, and then again, this null is still classified as black. So we'd see that this has a depth of 2. We check it for its second path, and we see that 5, 1, black node, uh, black null, uh, node 2. Then when we get to 25, well, 25, that's a black node, so we count it. We don't count 20 because it's you know, not a black node, but its leaf node is. So, what do you know? This one happens to have 2. And, as you can already guess, so does this one, so does this one, and so does this one. And you could do this for every single node. If I did it for 5, it has uh, a black depth of all possible paths, one and one. If I did it with 50, I did it with 85, every single one of my nodes would work perfectly.